It's our responsibility once we're born again to renew our minds because you know you're going to think the same way you always thought until we're willing to do something with our with our, our thought life. And then of course the body does not get born again. It's up to us, the Bible says, to bring our body under. You know, because if you don't, you know, your body will want to do the same old things it's been doing all those years before you were saved. Hello, welcome to Arise and Shine. Tony and I are here today um, to minister to you and to minister to ourselves as well and see what the Holy Spirit has to say. We're going to be talking some about the heart of man. And you know, the Bible talks about out of the heart of man flows the issues of life. And we want to help bring that knowledge to you. And we hope that you're able to participate today, or if not, at least, you know, leave us on to where you can kind of hear the discussion. We do invite you to try to go back and, you know, search the Word of God for yourself because Absolutely. we don't want you to take our word about anything, it's only through the word of God that we want to be able to encourage you and to lift you up. That is our goal here at Arise and Shine. We want to be a light to you, an encouragement to, if you're going through a hard time, to be that little bit of boost to push you through to that next day. And um, hopefully this will be a part of that for you today. Amen. Please connect with Arise and Shine by visiting our Facebook page at facebook.com slash Arise and Shine TV show or emailing us at Arise and Shine TV at gmail.com. We look forward to connecting with you. Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he hath known my name. Go ahead and read that next too. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. You see the couple of becauses in there and what he's promised us? Number one, he, he promised us that if we would set our love upon him, mm -hmm. in other words, set our heart. When you look that word up, it, it talks a lot about the heart again. You know, about what you do with your thought life. You know, and, and that, that in, internal part of you. He said, if you will set your love upon me, he said, I'll deliver you. Mm -hmm. He said, I'll set you upon high because you have known my name. Well, the only way you're going to know his name and, 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 and know what he stands for is by knowing what his word says. See, that's the only way that you can do that. And he goes on and he says, he, he goes on and says, uh, he shall call upon me and I will answer him. See, that's the answer to prayer. See, he'll answer your prayer. He said, what? If you'll set your love upon me. Well, you can't set your love upon something without setting your heart on it. And when you think about something, something that you love, something that you love, that you have an affection for, that you have a, a longing for, something that, that brings you pleasure, that delights you, something that you'll always, now listen, you'll always, if you've got something you love, you're going to want to spend time with it or with them. And you're, want, you're going, and they're, whatever it is, or whatever, whoever they are, they're going to be, it, or they are going to begin to dominate a lot of your thought life. Mm -hmm. That's just the way, that's the way we are as humans. If, if you know, if, if, if you love old cars, like I like old cars, you can, I mean, you can love old cars to the point that that's all you spend your time thinking about. Mm -hmm. You'll have calendars of them. You'll have pictures of them. You'll go to all the car shows. You'll do all the things, you know, that is around that. You know, is it wrong to love old cars? No. But you can give, now listen, old cars too much of your heart. Because mm -hmm. he said to love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. You know, and he said with all your heart. And so what he's saying is he wants to be the most important thing in your life. He wants to be the center of the focus of your life. And he wants your thought life to be on him more than anything else. Mm -hmm. He wants you to go to bed thinking about him. He wants you to get up thinking about him. He wants you to remind yourself of him throughout your day. And you'll come to the point, if you'll do that, that your dreams will begin to be filled with him. Mm -hmm. And he, he wants it. So they mean, well, you know, how do you do that and do everything else? Guys, you can do that. Yeah. Matter of fact, unless you're willing to do what I just said, your relationship with your wife or your relationship with your husband is going to suffer because of that because you're going to try to live a life with them 
out of a life of selfishness. Because when you give yourself to Him, it changes the way you do. It will change. Now listen, just like W.E. Vine said, it'll change your desires, it'll change your deeds, and it'll change your actions. It'll change you. See, we want to change ourselves from the outside. We want to try to fix things externally. But God's Word says, no, the problem is the condition of the heart. The reason we struggle in life is because what did Jesus say in the Beatitudes? About the heart. Do you remember that one? He said, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. See, that was what Jesus said. He said that was one of the things of the Beatitudes. He said, Blessed are the pure in heart. What does that mean? Well, are your hearts pure? That means your entire focus of your life, Jesus Christ, the Heavenly Father, are more important to you, and you love them more than anybody else. Your love even for your spouse even for your children, even for your job, your career, your hobbies, everything else in life that you do, even what we are doing here right now pales in comparison to our love for Him. It's because of our love for Him that we do this right here. And it's because of our love for Him that we treat our spouse in a way that's respectful, in a way that's honorable. And we love them, and we're attentive to them, and we care about them. Why? Because of that love we have for Him. It enables us to love ourselves, and not only to love ourselves, but to love others as ourselves. See, it's amazing. The condition of the heart does everything. I mean, it determines everything. You got something. Well, like you said, this isn't something, you know, lots of people have the idea that what you're going to do is spend your whole day, you know, in your prayer closet, you know, with the word in front of you, and I'm not minimizing that at all. We all need to have that certain time, that quiet time Absolutely. where we do spend and fellowship Absolutely. and feed, you know, from the word of God. But like you were saying, um, Jesus wants to be involved in every area. Uh -huh. So how do, you, how do you do that? How do you stay attentive and knowledge, you know, aware of him and go about your daily task, especially as a wife or a mother or, you know, you have a job. Mm -hmm. And the way you do that, like you said, is to begin to involve him in your decisions, you know, oh, or in, good. I that's mean, good. like when you raise your children, how, what values do you pick that you're going to teach your children? Well, you go back to his word and you teach them to love and to share and, you know, to give and to be thoughtful and kind and, you know, all the attributes of the Holy Spirit, but you have to do it through the word of God. And in doing that, you are loving him. Absolutely. And the same, you know, on the job, you come in contact with people. Well, you share his love with them. Right. You know, you put them above yourself. You know, you take their needs and their, oh, um, their, <laughs> their things into consideration when you make decisions that you make, you know, and even if you're in a position to where you teach and train people, you know, in your job, well, you do that again through the nature of Jesus, you right. know, and that's how you involve him. We're not saying that we expect everyone to, no. you know, you, I mean, in our days and lives, we can't, you know, go to church physically every day, you know, and, and spend six and eight hours, you know, unless you're called into, you know, something like that. But that's not the everyday, us everyday people. That's no, not our lives. Not. But knowing the Word of God and being able to, again, make our decisions and make our actions come from the Word of God, that's how we show Him Absolutely. love. That's how we involve Him. And just asking Him to be involved. You know, when you start your day, because you don't know what you're going to, I mean, oh, yeah. has anybody have a day, have had a day that, you know, this transpired wasn't exactly as they had planned. I mean, things just happen. So you just kind of like, Lord, you know, you're, you spend that early time with Him and you spend that time reading His Word and you just, I tell myself all the time, Lord, I'm just going to feed my spirit on Your Word. Your Word, Jesus, You said that my words are life, you know, to those that find them, you know, life and, and peace. So, uh, so I just feed my spirit on Your Word and, and I just ask You to help me through this day. Let somebody cross my path that I can be a blessing to, you know, and, and help me to, to, you know, with my job. I've got a job to do, you know, help me to be able to do it, you know, in, in, a, in a good way, in an easy way. So it's not hard and not struggling and everything. And when you do that, I mean, he hears you mm -hmm. and he'll get, I mean, he's sometimes waiting, sitting, standing beside us, waiting to get involved in what we're doing. And all he's waiting on is for an invitation. 
to, in, an invitation to come in and to help us. He wants to help us so much. And I think we miss a lot of those opportunities too because we're not, you know, thinking, you know, when mm. you're driving or getting out to pump gas, you know, just thinking about the Lord, you know, and how good He's been to you or this or that. And then when that opportunity comes up, you're more aware of it. You know, oh, absolutely. You, you recognize it for what it is. You know, and a big part of that too is, is realizing that, uh, you know, you're here on the earth, but, you know, and you're born again. You're born of His Spirit and you have His Spirit living on inside you and the Holy Spirit, but He's also given angels. You know, and just like I just, we, while she was talking about getting out and pumping gas, I mean, you know, you don't know when you got pumping gas what's going to happen to you. You know, because there's people all around you that are nuts <laughs> and they just do crazy stuff. But you know, if you're just, just like go back to Psalms 91 right here where we were, you know, He's given His angels charge over us. Thank God they keep us in all their ways. They bear us up in their hands. At least we should dash your foot against the stones. Father, I just thank you for angels that go with me today. And they just encamp around about me and they deliver me because I choose to have that respectful, wholesome fear for you, Lord. And I know that you are the God Almighty. And you'll be amazed at what he can keep you out of. And that's how you keep them involved in your life. You know, people right. people don't, they make it harder than it is. I yeah, mean, we, it's, we it's as simple as just reading God's word, believing it, and just reminding yourself of it. And speaking it out. Yes, speaking, and speaking it, it, yeah, it out. And that, that's just how you keep it going. That's and that's how, how you, you keep him involved in your life. Mm -hmm. You know, you just thank him that, you know, when you say you, you've got a job to do and, and, and you, you, you almost got this dread and that dread's a fear. The devil tries to put that fear on you. You just say, no, thank God. You know, Philippians 4, 13, I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. I believe that the Spirit of God will enable me to overcome any obstacle that I have to overcome, even if it's dealing with other people. It, the Lord knows how to work that stuff out. See, that's how we're talking about involving Him and how to love Him with our whole hearts. You know, and it's just amazing what He can do in our lives when we begin to do that. Let's go to Proverbs 4. I love this. I love this one here. This one is a really good one. Proverbs chapter 4. And this, there's so much in this. But there's, there's no way that we can try to bring everything out that, that is here. We're going to go to verse 20, I believe it is. Proverbs 4 and 20. And uh, <clears throat> matter of fact, we're going to read this. Here's a little recipe for healing in this. Not only for healing, but for health. And if we would just learn to do what the, the Holy Spirit was saying here through Solomon uh, and do these things... Uh, it would, it would actually enable us to walk in healing and health more than, than we do sometimes. But listen to what this says. He said, my son, attend unto my words. First thing he said was what? Put my word first. That's what attend means to. Put my word first. In other words, make my word the most important thing in your life. Why, he said. Well, he goes on and tells us, number one, he said, make, uh, incline your ear into my words. Attend to my words, rather. Then he said, incline thine ear unto my sayings. So in other words, uh, your ears need to hear God's word. That's why I said I, I've made it a habit for years now. I'll go and read the book of Psalms 91 out loud because I, my, 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 I, my, I want my ears to hear what God's word says because he said that's what he said to do here. Number two, he goes on and says, let them not, now notice, depart from before thine eyes. In other words, look at them when you're reading them. Don't just get to where you quote them. But there's something about looking at them and reading them out loud to yourself. Well, they'll tell you the more things you incorporate in this whole learning process, what happens is it increases the abil your ability to retain what you're hearing and what you're exposing yourself to. That's why if you read something, then you read it out, if you read it just to yourself, but then if you read it out loud, it does something totally different. It increases it. Then if you look at what you're saying, what you're reading, you know, it increases it even more. So he said, attend unto my words and climb thine ear into my saying. He said, keep them in the midst of thine heart. He then goes on and says, now listen, he said, let them not depart from before thine eyes, but keep them in the midst of thine heart. Got that? In the midst of your heart. Remember how to have, we're talking about how to have a pure heart before God and to love the Lord thy God with all your heart. Now listen. He said, for they, they what? Words, God's words. They are life. Now listen to those that find them. If you will speak God's word out, out loud to yourself long enough, you will do what he says here and you will find them. What happens, God's word has the ability, just like watching the wrong thing 
long enough to the point that you become a violent person externally will affect you meditating and thinking about God's word and exposing yourself to it will change the way you treat other people. It will enable you to actually walk in the scriptural, biblical, God kind of love. And you will do just what Melissa said. You can actually come to the place where you want to prefer someone else's needs above your own. See, you can't do that on your own. See, that, you can only do that by stimulating the love of God that's in you, that's been shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Ghost, the Bible says, and by allowing that love to grow to the place where that, that love can dominate your actions. Mm -hmm. And that's why we do that, by doing this, attending unto God's Word and allowing God's Word to, uh, to, to reside down on the inside of us. It said, it's life unto all those that find them, now listen, and health to all their flesh. One translation, Amphalite says, uh, health and healing. Some translations actually say it's medicine. Mm -hmm. It's medicine to all our flesh. So you mean you can take God's Word and you can expose yourself to it long enough by looking at it with your eyes and speaking it with your mouth over and over and over and over and over to the place where that, that Word will actually begin to cause healing and health to spring up in your body. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's exactly what those verses are saying. Because listen what the very next verse after that says. Keep your heart. Mm -hmm. In other words, keep your heart. Okay? We probably got the idea that God wants, you know, we want God to keep our heart for, for us. Lord, keep me from evil. Keep me from doing this. Keep me from doing that. You know what I'm saying? And the Bible does say that under the Old Testament. It does say that when Jesus, you know, says, keep me, you know, keep me from evil. You know, and there is a certain amount that he can do for you. But here it says, really, the one that's going to keep you from evil is going to be you. He said, keep your heart. Now, notice, why keep your heart? Well, remember what W.E. Vine said? You know, that it, your heart is the, the fountain, whatever's in you. James said it this way, you know, salt water and spring water can't come from the same fountain. You know, you know if, you, if you're full of salt, if you're full of salt, that, that bitterness, that whatever, that's what's going to come out. You ready? You ready? There's somebody out there that you are so bitter and you are so unforgiving towards somebody. And the reason you are is because you have allowed the devil to continually put it in your mind, these thoughts of how somebody in the past has wronged you. And you've rolled that thing over and over and over and over and over inside of you to the point that you see that it is absolutely impossible for you to be able to forgive them and get past the bitterness. And what you don't realize is that person that did that wrong to you has absolutely no consciousness or awareness that there was ever an offense or a wrong. But you have held on to that thing so long that that is a root of bitterness, the Word of God says, and that unforgiveness is the root and the source of the sickness and the illness that you're dealing with. It has allowed that sickness and disease to come in, and the devil is the one that has put those thoughts in your heart to get you to take that bait of unforgiveness to create that bitterness in your life. Now listen, and, he, and you are, because you have listened to him, are destroying your own life. And the, and, and the only involvement he had was was to give you that thought. He kept bringing that thought. Well, you remember what so-and-so did. You remember how they treated you. I can't believe, can you believe that they did that? How in the world can you ever forgive somebody that would treat you like that? And here it goes, on and on and on. And you've thought about that, that you've rolled that. It's just like, a, just like pushing wee wine, you know, and just keep playing it over and over and over and over and over and over until it's become such a part of your life that it dominates your entire life. And not only that, now listen, because of that situation with that particular individual, you treat everybody else the same way. And that's the reason. And now listen, forgiveness is your only way out. You must repent of that. If you don't, see, you're not hurting anybody else. You may be hard to live with. You may be cantankerous. You may be, you know, a, a thorn in a lot of people's side. But ultimately, the one that you're hurting the most is yourself because the devil has deceived you, darling. And he's talked you into believing that what he's telling you is the truth and it's not the truth. 
The, way, the only way you can get free is first of all ask God to forgive you and then turn around and forgive those people for what they've done irregardless and you can walk out of that thing into freedom. And then you can begin to protect your heart because those thoughts will keep coming back. And you just have to tell them, no, 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 no. Thank God I forgave that person. Thank God not only have I forgave, it, forgave them, but I choose to forget it and drop it and never allow that thought into my life again. Guys, that's how we stay free from the enemy and by the attacks he brings on us. Amen? Amen. So let's go on just a little further here. He said, read verse 23. Just go ahead and read the rest of that chapter, Melissa. Okay. <clears throat> Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Put away from thee a forward mouth, and perverse lips put far from thee. Let thine eyes look right on, and let thine eyelids look straight before thee. Ponder the path of thy feet, and let all thy ways be established. Turn not to the right hand nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. That was exactly what you were saying. It is, Those thoughts it? are going to come back either on the right or the left or, you know, through, mm -hmm. through a recognition of seeing that person or something, but you got to stay. But when you, but yeah, but you, if you go back up there, he said, the first thing he said was attend to my word. Mm -hmm. in, other words, <laughs> in other words, what he's saying is a forward mouth is anything that speaks. If you, when you speak anything that violates what God's word says, mm -hmm. if you, and, I mean, if God's word says uh, by his stripes we're healed, and you keep saying, I'm sick and I'm going to die. Guys, I, I, I'm not trying to be cruel, but I'm just trying to get you to see. That's a forward mouth. Mm -hmm. As far as God's concerned, you just lied. Because, see, His Word is the truth. Yes. He'll tell you, I mean, if Jesus could stand right in front of you, He'd look at you and say, I don't know what you're talking about. You're, you're healed. And you say, well, I don't know what you, what do you mean I'm healed? He said, what do you think I did by being tied to that whipping post and allowing them to beat me? He said, by my stripes, you are healed. Whether you can believe it, whether you receive it, whether you ever walk in it or not, it, that is a fact. That is a reality, you know. And so he said, a forward mouth, put that away from you. In other words, what you say with your mouth, notice, what you see with your eyes and where you let your feet go. He said, keep it straight. Stay focused on what God's Word said because they will come back. And he said right there in that one, for they are, he said, for they are, what is it? Let's see, he said, he said, for out of it, out of the heart, flows the issues. One translation says the forces of life. That right there is exactly what W.E. Vine was talking about when he said, the heart of man is a fountain. What you put in the heart, what you put in your heart is exactly what's going to come out. So as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Now you tell me, guys, how powerful is a thought? One thought, good or bad, can either destroy your life or can deliver you and keep you safe. And I mean, just the thought that, you know, there's, I mean, there's a thousand to fall at my side, 10,000 at my right hand, but it shall not come nigh me. One thought like that, and you see men in the past that have gone into combat and people dying all around them, and they would be one that would come out unscathed, unharmed. And you wonder how in the world they were right there in the same place. Well, I guess it was just a coincidence or I guess it was just God's will. No, they probably had a praying mama or a praying grandmother that released angels on the behalf of that son or that grandson. And God sent those angels when everybody else could have had angels, when everybody else could have had deliverance and could have had protection. That person had it because they chose to do what God's word said. And that's why a lot of times that we end up where we end up at. And does that mean we're going to always do everything perfect? No, no. But we try our best to live by what God's Word says. And, uh, and because of that, when you do that, see, you obligate Him. And He wants to be obligated to do what He said He would do in His Word. Amen. Please connect with Arise and Shine by visiting our Facebook page at facebook.com slash Arise and Shine TV show or emailing us at TV at gmail.com. We look forward to connecting with you. We've been talking about the, the heart of man and the condition of a man's heart. And you know, that all begins with uh, really giving your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. It's, it's, it's not about necessarily joining a church. It's not about uh, trying to change your behavior, you know, turning over a, a new leaf, so to speak, or having a New Year's resolution, those kind of things. 
You know, Jesus said it this way in John chapter 3. He said, except a man be born again, he shall not inherit or see the kingdom of God. And it takes that new birth. In that new birth is when, you know, he, he, he changes you from the inside out. He, he takes away that old sinful nature out of your spirit and recreates your human spirit into his image and his likeness and he gives you a new heart. And then we begin to just walk that out and we begin to grow in that. And so if you're out there today and you say, well, Tony, I, I, I've never done that. I've never made Jesus Christ the Lord of my life by giving him my heart. Or you're out there today and you say, well, I have, but you know, I've allowed things into my life like we've been talking about. And they begin to take that place where he should only have. And so I want to give my life by, and my heart back to him again. We want to pray for you and we want to pray with you right now if you don't mind. And so we're going to just pray for you. And if you're out there, pray, I want you to pray this prayer with us as we pray it and, 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 and follow through with that. So because I believe that will be the beginning of a change in your life that you've been looking for for a long time. Now, Father, we're just going to pray for them as we said. We lift them up before you and we ask you, sir, to do what only you can do. We can lead them through the process of what your word says to do. But Lord, de determined by their heart, in their sincerity, Lord God, as they're sincere and genuine about what they say, there will be a supernatural change come into their lives as you change them, Father, from the inside out. Now say this prayer with me. Say, I, say, Jesus. Jesus. I take you today. I take you today. As my Lord. As my Lord. And my Savior. And my Savior. Satan. Satan. You are not my God. You are not my God. Any longer. Any longer. You are not my Lord. You are not my Lord. Jesus. Jesus. Is my Lord. Is my Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. For hearing my prayer. For hearing my prayer. And for Jesus. And for Jesus. Coming into my heart. Coming into my heart. And changing me today. And changing me today. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. For filling me. For filling me. With the fullness of your spirit. With the fullness of your spirit. Teach me. Teach me. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. About the Father. About the Father. And about Jesus. And about Jesus. Through your holy word. Through your holy word. And I thank you for it. And I thank you for it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer, there was a change that just took place in your life. We call it the ABCs. We ask, we believe, we receive and we confess. You've asked and now you believed you received and we want to encourage you to confess. Tell someone about what you did today. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, if you be ashamed of me before men, I will be ashamed of you before the Father. But if you confess me before men, I will confess you before the Father. Now God bless you. Let us know if, what God's done in your life and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.